Hey, yo, how's it going, guys? Six Foot Hacks here. Happy for y'all today. GBA Season 9, Week 1, against my boy, Mr. Numb Nexus, coach of the Pittsburgh Pichus. His channel looking stuff will be down below if you guys go ahead and check out. So, for those of you who don't watch my APA videos, yes, normally I do live battles. Unfortunately, though, my capture card is having issues, so hopefully by week three, I'll be able to have live battles back for you guys because I'm doing week two tomorrow on Monday, the day after this is going to be going up. So yeah, just kind of bear with me here. I know most of you guys like live battles. I went over this during the APA, so yeah, just telling you guys I didn't know. But uh, if you guys do enjoy the video, you know what to do. Also, let me know in the comment section below, what do you think is going to be our kill leader for this season? If you guys saw our draft analysis video, you will know that we have an insane amount of offensive threats on our squad. So let me know who you think is going to have the most kills at the end of the season in the comment section below. If you may have missed my team builder, check that out. That will also be down in the description. I was trying something a little bit different. Let me know if you guys liked it or not. But going into this battle, I got five of the six months correct that i thought nexus going was going to bring i really thought he was going to have buzzwall or maybe the rotom heat over something like mimikyu but uh low-key mimikyu late game could actually be a little bit of a problem if i lose my dark cry so i have to be very careful with how i play my dark cry in this battle regardless though i figured that my best lead is going to be my comfy just because i don't expect them to lead with the celesteela i feel like he may want to lead with the yuxi most likely or potentially the zorark as he ended up leading off with the zygarde which could be zorark i don't really know Either way though, I don't want it to potentially be Zygarde and it starts setting up on me so I go straight for the taunt as I catch the incoming Mega Venusaur which is amazing because with me having U-turn on this Comfy not only am I faster but I also know he's going to go for an offensive move which most likely will be Sludge Bomb or the Hidden Power Fire so I figured I could bring in my Garchomp but he actually switches into Celesteela and this is amazing because I did not think this scenario would happen so early on in the battle because I can now bring in my thunders for free with him having leftovers I'm very positive he's not gonna have any way of being able to threaten my thunderous entirely too bad and obviously he's not gonna want to stay in and take a thunderbolt when it's so early on in the battle so what I'm gonna do is actually go for the nasty plot expecting him to switch out as he does end up bringing in what I'm hoping is Mega Venusaur not gonna lie a part of me thought that this was gonna be Zoroark uh, which would have been absolutely insane if Nexus had predicted me to Nasty Plot and just hard switched directly into a Scarf Zoroark. But thankfully, it just turns out to be regular uh, Mega Venusaur. And when the text for Venusaur showed up before my Z move went off, I got so scared because I really thought, I really thought that it was Scarf Zoroark. And it was him going first and getting off damage on me, which also meant that I just wasted my Z move. Thankfully though, I went with my gut instinct and I go straight for the Shattered Psyche. This is plus two even though I am not close. Well, I'm not max special attack. I'm like 220 in my special attack. Even if this was max Spadef, max HP, calm natured Mega Venusaur, there's no way it's going to live this Shattered Psyche. I'm sorry Mega Venusaur. It just got abused, but you gotta go. I can't have you roaming the field being stupidly fat along with all the other bulk that Nexus already has. So in comes again what I think is Zygarde. Plus two Hidden Power Ice, Clean Oko Zygarde. But it turns out that he is indeed Zorark and he's also Scarfed. But because he's not able to flinch me, it does not matter entirely too much that he was able to get off this damage on me because now I'm able to severely weaken him. And it's actually kind of insane that at a plus two HP, I still did that much damage to Zorak. Then again, Zorak really isn't the most bulky thing around, so uh, it is what it is. As this turn, Nexus makes an immaculate play. This was a really, really good double switch on Nexus's part because he knows that I'm not going to want to lose my Thunderous since I can still keep it around for later in the battle. And obviously, with his Zorak being able to outspeed me, I am going to expect him to go for the Dark Pulse, which is why him switching into Celesteely here, probably thinking I will bring in Kofi, was such a good play. I thought about maybe bringing in Dark Cry, but again, I don't want my Dark Cry to take too much unnecessary damage. So so Comfy honestly was my safest play there and Nexus was able to take advantage of that as I'm forced to switch out here. I could have gone for the taunt but I really didn't want to risk a potential heavy slam as I U-turn back into my Thunderous. I do get a little bit lucky and he misses the Leech Seed. Now that miss really sucked because he's not going to be able to pressure my Thunderous but then he makes this insane play of staying in thinking that I wouldn't go for the Thunderbolt as I don't go for the Thunderbolt because I thought he would switch. I went for the Nasty Plot again, thinking that, oh, maybe he'll bring in like Yuxi or something this time. No, he stays in, goes for the Flamethrower, and he gets a little bit of justice with the burn. I mean, I don't think the burn necessarily makes up 
for the Leech Seed, but if he had hit the Leech Seed, he might have gone for Protect as I went for Nasty Plot, and then that way he wouldn't have got the Flamethrower damage off on me, and then we would have been in a mind game scenario of, am I going to Thunderbolt the Celesteela, or am I going to try an HP Ice expecting Zygarde to come in? So, because I Thunderbolted this turn on his Protect, I'm thinking, okay, maybe he'll think I'll go for the HP Ice expecting Zygarde, and I can thunder. No, I thought that he would switch out thinking that I would go for Thunderbolt and I could go for HP Ice. Unfortunately, though, that doesn't really pan out as he tries to get the double protect. I do still get off a little bit of damage, though, a solid chunk of damage with my Hidden Power Ice, confirming that this is most definitely a more physically defensive Celesteela as opposed to a specially defensive one, which is going to allow me to then bring in my modest Expert Belt Darkrai here and go straight for the Thunderbolt, even if I don't knock him out. It's either a damage roll, or in return, the worst he can do to me is hit me with the Heavy Slam, which still won't put me in range of where a plus four Shadow Sneak for Mimikyu even knocks me out. And uh, speaking of Mimikyu, in it comes. And ah, this was the one turn I feel like I really regret. This was the one turn I really regret because I wanted to Dark Pulse. I really, really did want to Dark Pulse, but I didn't want to risk him just going straight for the player off, which is why I do make the switch into my Comfy. If he has Adamant, and not close to max speed, I do believe I outspeed him, which means I could go for the U-turn and break his disguise if he did go for the player rough. Unfortunately, because he did Sword Zance, I now need to go for the Draining Kiss in order to ensure that I am faster than him. Plus, if there was something else I was going to sack off, it was probably going to be my Ferrothorn, but even as long as I have Ferrothorn, I should still be able to deal with the Zorark, although Comfy pretty much 100% ensured that Zorark couldn't win, Ferrothorn still gives me a good chance that Zorark won't be able to sweep late game essentially. So I'm able to break the disguise on this Mimikyu, which is absolutely amazing because now, even though, yes, he's going to absolutely uh, murder my poor little Comfy here, this means that I can now bring in either my Life Orb Garchomp to revenge kill him with the Earthquake or I can bring in my Choice Bane and Mars Shadow and go for the Shadow Sneak. Now, realistically, I don't want to bring in my Mars Shadow because if that is a Dragon Dance Zygarde in the back, then if I'm locked in the Shadow Sneak, he gets a free Dragon Dance, and that's obviously really bad. The good thing about me being Life Orb Garchomp, though, is if that he's not running a lot of HP investment, I should be able to easily knock him out with this Earthquake. As I go for it, he is going to just barely... Oh my god, I can't even see that. Are you so he lived, and then he misses play from. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that was so lucky. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. Uh, I'm going to try and put the calc on the screen right now. As you can see, the damage roll was in my favor, obviously, but I didn't get it. And then he missed the player off. Honestly, I kind of wish that he had knocked out my Garchomp. Because then that way, it would have been a double down. And realistically, I could have just brought in my Mars Shadow, even if he has Scarf Zorark. I can tank one, um, what's it called, Dark Pulse and still knock out the Zoroark. And then Marshadow basically just murders everything else that he's got left at this point. Or I could have brought in Darkrai on the double down and pretty much done the same thing as well. As I bring in my Darkrai this turn, I thought that he may go for a foul play or a hidden power ice. So I was going to try and bring in my Darkrai for essentially free is what I thought. But unfortunately, he does end up going for the U-turn. And that's actually really upsetting because if I had just gone for the Outrage with my Garchomp, then I probably would have just got a free KO, but it's not that big of an issue. It's not really game-changing, but it's fine. As in comes the Zygarde, turns out that he's got the Yachi Berry, which this Ice Beam still does a ridiculous amount of damage. Oh my god, that's like 90%. I'm modest expert belt, by the way. Zygarde 50% does have some pretty good natural bolt. Unfortunately, though, because he was able to live, he ends up getting off a Dragon Dance. And I'm not going to lie, this is actually looking a little bit scary because now it's the end of the turn. Which means Zygarde 50% is going to be able to transform into Zygarde freaking complete. And this thing in itself is also just absurdly, absurdly bulky. Plus, he gains back a good amount of HP. Sorry, a good amount of HP, putting him almost at a uh, 50%. Now, I don't think he's going to go for a second Dragon Dance because obviously an Ice Beam will knock him out. So what I'm going to decide to do is actually stack off my Garchomp here in hopes that he would go 40,000 arrows as he does do so. Down goes my Garchomp. If I didn't have Garchomp, I probably would have hard switched directly into my Ferrothorn. And if this wasn't Substitute Zygarde, then I don't think it really would have mattered too much if I had lost my Garchomp earlier in the battle. As I can bring in my Marsh Shadow here, the match basically comes down to whether or not 
he has outrage and if he's adamant max attack but he ends up going for the thousand arrows which i will always guarantee live because of the huge amount of physical defense evs i have on my marsh shadow here and what this allows me to do is now steal the plus one speed and the plus one attack from this zygarde complete putting me effectively at plus two attack and plus one speed and because i am also running enough speed to outspeed the zoroark there is no way zoroark is going to be able to revenge kill me here after i knock out this zygarde complete and his last two mons are yuxi and the Zorark, as I mentioned. So his only hope at this point is to pray that Zorark outspeeds my Marsh Shadow. Which, spoilers, it does not, as I mentioned. So it's not really a spoiler, but... Yeah, the, ba the match is basically over, guys. Like, there's nothing Nexus can do at this point. Even though Yuxi is ridiculously bulky as well, it's very hard to one-shot Yuxi in general. <laughs> I'm plus two adamant. Uh, and this is stabbed. Super effective. There's no chance that the uh, incoming Yuxi is going to be able to live this hit, regardless of what it wants to do here. So again, I will be able to outspeed him, and that is going to be the game for the 3 out victory in the Durham Dredagon's favor for week one of GBA season nine. So we are off to a really good start, guys. Hopefully we can continue our luck for the remainder of the season, and it won't be as rough of a season as uh, the APA. So if you guys did enjoy, hit that thumbs up button down below. Let me know in the comment section below what you think is going to be our kill leader for this season of the GBA. And with that being said, I will see you all next Sunday with week number two. So thank you all for watching. Later, everybody. Because my brain and heart are both tied in the knot and this hinders me from flying a lot. This causing me to show no emotion. But when I said I cared, I wasn't joking. But I guess it's too late for me to become broken. Now I'm living with no more pain, tears of hoping I'm just coasting Yeah, I said I'm coasting No more pain, tears, and hoping For real